Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. We're in Section 751 of Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics, Second Edition. This is where we cover... So we, we've long ago hinted that there's energy stored in the fields. We haven't really had a compelling reason to say, yes, it's actually in the fields, and no, it's not the particles themselves. Um, now we're at the point where we're going to uncover a violation of Newton's Third Law, a seeming violation, actually. And um, when you see this, I want you to first prep your mind, say, okay, what's the big deal about Newton's third law? Well, Newton's third law says that for every force, if object A puts a force on object B, then there's an equal and opposite force of B on A, okay? And the fallout from this is that there's always like a, an, an account of forces, and that account balance is always zero, okay? And the, the implication is that energy is conserved, and the implication is that momentum is conserved. If we break Newton's third law, if, if these equations that Maxwell gave us give us a force on A by B and on B by A that isn't equal and opposite, okay? If this is the case, then we're basically screwed. We are in a deep hole that, you know, all the, all the, the nice balance of the universe is upset and you know, we're, we're going to want to go home and cry to our mommies about the fact that physics is hard, okay? So let's, let's first, I'm going to show you how Newton's third law is broken with electrodynamics. Um, and I'm going to do it with hand waving. It's actually rather easy. So let's draw our coordinate axes, okay? And we have basically train tracks where we have, um, you know, a box car, a box car full of charge, um, moving with the velocity along the x-axis this direction, and then we have another charge up here, roughly the same distance away, same charge, moving with the same velocity. Okay, I should have used orange for the electric charge, you know, um, electric field. Anyway. So the electric field, which I'm going to represent with this nice magenta color, okay, is going to spread out radially from these, these charges. Okay? So over here, the electric field, due to this first charge, is going to point away. So there's an electric field pointing away. And then down here, there's an electric field pointing away that way. Okay? Okay. The actual electric field these charges, these moving charges produce, is... Um, not as simple as what you might hope. There's um, the electric field's kind of compressed in the in the perpendicular direction. Um, it's stronger that direction, and and the direction the the charge is moving towards and moving away from the electric field is quite a bit weaker. This has to do with the fact that the electric field depends on the changing magnetic field, okay, and everything like that. And the changing electric field creates a changing whatever. Okay, the magnetic field is going to still curl around this way. And so over here, we're going to get a magnetic field this direction, perpendicular. And this dude is traveling down, so we're going to get a magnetic field this way, which is also perpendicular. Okay, understand that this B vector is pointing along the Z axis, and this one is pointing along this z axis. So there the B field is not it's not like the electric field. They're not well they are pointing away from each other but in in a perpendicular direction. Now when we go to calculate the force due to the electric field, okay, grab another color, a nice red. Okay. The force due to the electric field is going to be always perpendicular or parallel, I'm sorry. Okay. It's always parallel with the electric field. You multiply the charge times the electric field, you get that. However, the magnetic field is V cross B, okay, times the charge, of course. So in this case, it's pointing up. This is the force through the magnetic field. In this case, V cross B, uh, that's my rule, v, V cross B, it's pointing this way, perpendicular to the Okay, the electric fields cancel, okay? The magnetic fields don't. They're not equal and opposite. I want you to 
if you need to go go get some toothpicks use your right hand and think really hard about the direction of the forces and the magnetic fields okay it is absolutely the case that the forces due to the magnetic fields are perpendicular to each other they're not equal and opposite newton's third law is broken here okay there is a resolution to this um, one resolution is you say that the momentum is conserved, but there's a certain amount of momentum in the fields themselves. Okay, and that's, that's a very good way to look at it. The way I like to look at it as well is that the charges never interact with each other. That's not how it works. The charges interact with fields, and the fields interact with the charge. And if you think about it that way, then you have to think of the momentum stored in the fields. There's a momentum transfer from the charge to the field. And then a momentum transfer from the charge, from the field to the charge. Okay. This sounds completely foreign when you're thinking of electrostatics, electro, uh, uh, magnetostatics. But in electrodynamics, you're going to find that there is momentum traveling through the field. It has to be. The momentum is subtracted from the particle, put into the field, and then later on when that field hits the other particle, the momentum is transferred to the particle. That's what's going to happen. Next is Poynting's theorem. But there could be no better name for this theorem, by the way. Anyway, thanks for your time.